I'm trying to bring together all kind of explode, explosion which was happening in knowledge at the time. He was a kind of a leader who was looking at different works in different places. He thought about the structure of atom. He put all these electrons into orbit and said that these electrons of different atoms starting with hydrogen can exist only in definite orbits with a definite energy which he called a stationary speed. Though this also got modified later on which is not completely correct but you should realize that at that time no pre-existing knowledge of all the stationary states or orbits were existing. He was bold enough to bring them. And that is probably a uh, starting point for many of the other developments which have taken place in the later years. <coughs> and uh, you know, Bohr radius. I am not going to ask you a question on what is called a Bohr radius. But you can just uh, uh, try to find it out. Now, the introduction which I am going to give here is uh, to introduce you to the concept of the light as a probe to see smaller things. What are its strengths and what are its capabilities and what is its weakness also? The light as a probe is something which all of you know. After all, our eyes see because of light. When there is darkness, you cannot see. And any instrument like a hand magnifier or a microscope, optical microscope, you need to have light. The concept of light is important in understanding the development later on which took place to really see these atoms and molecules. That's why I am just giving you the kind of developments which have taken place from the days of uh, <coughs> Hugh Jones, for example, whose stamp I have put here, who was bold enough to say the light consists of waves. It's a wave theory of light. Before that, it was thought to be corpuscular or particles. It was by Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton's authority in science is something unsurpassable surpassable for several centuries. But his theory of corpuscular light was contested by Hugh Jones, who said light consists of waves. What kind of waves? This is something that clarified much later. But the wave theory is very important in understanding many of the phenomena. I will just highlight one phenomena later on. But then, the greater understanding of the light came with the theory of electromagnetism by famous James plus Maxwell. His Maxwell's theory and, uh, and his hertz. You know, the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation is measured in hertz. So, Hertz is after the name of Hendrix Hertz, who is the, uh, who has done so much of work on wave propagation. <coughs> and uh, this is the electromagnetic spectrum. You have a range of uh, wavelengths, starting from, you know, lowest wavelength and highest uh, frequency, you know, in the gamma rays, you know, you have radio waves. Uh, which have the very high wavelengths and the lowest frequency. And in between you have different uh, regions. Now, what is the limitation as that of a microscope as a probe for light? Now, when I told the theory of Hugh uh, Jones that light is consisting of uh, waves. Now, the wave theory of light can only explain phenomena like, for example, diffraction. You know the experiment that is being done here. This is called uh, Young's double slit experiment, where this small slit through which light propagates and uh, which is diffraction. The diffraction is the bending of light at the, the obstacles. So through the slit, light propagates and then it diverges. 
and you have the semi uh, spherical wave fronts that are developing. This is the wave front concept was by Christian Brujans. And then you, when you have the double slit, you will have the interference where the yeah, crest meets a trough and then cancels out and uh, crest meets a crest and then you have the addition. So that actually produces what's called interference pattern and this is a characteristic of light. But this interference pattern is very much important when you try to see smaller things. So how? This is because when you want to resolve two particles very close by, you need to really resolve. Resolve means you have to really clearly see these two objects or points as separate entities. In order that to happen, you need to have a system where these two points don't overlap. But the nature of light is such that there is a limit beyond which you cannot go. That is called a diffraction limit. In a circular aperture diffraction, if you want to resolve two points, that is the intensity profile on the top. If these two intensity profiles are very well separated, then you say it is well resolved. And if they overlap to some extent, then it is barely resolved. But if these two peaks come together so close, then you cannot resolve. But if you want to see smaller and smaller particles, you need to distinguish from neighboring particles. In order that to happen, you need to really get a way of preventing this phenomena of uh, interference, interference pattern, which is not possible with the, what is called a far field of optics, which normally we come across in the microscope. So it was something which was very well recognized and it was Ernest Abe who has worked on these microscopes and he is a, a great physicist who had done so much in the area of microscopy and he worked out the limit to which one can actually use 